a journey, a trip is, is a way to find things. It is a way to reflect while you're going from A to B. And it's a way to enter a culture, it's a way to explore that culture. You try to understand through raw material, through ingredients, through method of cooking. How do people live their lives? The way in general for me to move forward is to really start to have a, a much deeper understanding about how we relate uh, to, to, to nature, basically. What we're exploring now is the, is the Mayan culture. We went to the milpa. La milpa is a very sistema muy antiguo. O sea, esta zona donde estamos debe tener por lo menos unos 3500 años. Hoy para trabajar la milpa es lleva tiempo. ¿no? Porque primero hay que tumbar así. Solo yo, para la milpa, solo uno, para consumir la familia. How many of us have heard of slash and burn agriculture? It has a reputation for being destructive and not environmentally sound. But in a forest system like this, all of the biomass is where the mineral nutrition is that crops would need. It looks messy and chaotic, but it's really, really rich with a lot of different species that means that they don't have to use pesticides and fertilizers and those sorts of things. Entonces, la milpa es perfecta en cierto sentido porque es ecológica y nutricionalmente complementaria. Nutricionalmente el maíz nos va a dar carbohidratos, el frijol proteínas y la calabaza aceites de buena calidad y vitaminas. Y ecológicamente es muy interesante porque el maíz necesita nitrógeno, ese nitrógeno se lo da el frijol y el maíz sirve como un eje para que el frijol pueda trepar sobre de él. Al mismo tiempo la calabaza forma una alfombra que impide la formación de malezas. So this is where uh, we're going to plant in a, in, a, in a second. We need to go back and uh, mix the, the seeds and come back here and start uh, doing the work. Lo primero que se, que se hace es la El shack, el shack de las semillas, la mezcla, ¿no? la mezcla. Si lo siembras aparte el maíz, aparte el frijol, aparte los ibes, te va a llevar uh, mucho tiempo y por eso muchos así lo hacemos todo, así, pero revuelto, un shack. O sea, yo pienso que la cocina eh, contribuye a que se preserve la agrodiversidad. Siembran sus variedades locales que han desarrollado a lo largo de miles de años. Pero hay una cuestión, por ejemplo, este, en, en, durante el shack. Normalmente no se acostumbra a este, estar pisando el maíz. Aquí se ve como, una, como un grano sagrado y de hecho así lo es con nosotros porque pues, es la base de la, de la alimentación aquí. Sí, porque siempre, cada año así viene, siempre no falta un castigo. No la lluvia, la sequía, y, uh, sino un huracán. Tienes que pedirle a Dios que te ayude con tu milpa, que te vaya bien, que te da la comida, así es. Estas son las, las herramientas para, para la siembra. Se va calculando algo así como, uh, como un metro, como, uh, un, como un okay. paso para so ir sembrando. One step. Okay. Y es y este, okay, lo más profundo posible. We listen to the stories. We listen to the spiritual stories. We all felt that. They've been here for three and a half thousand years. They've been using the same method of agriculture. But they're still there and they're disappearing. So that's why for me it's, it's, it's very important that we, we take time to go and look for these places and see how we actually build our own culture. Because we are losing all that. When the Spaniards first came to Yucatan, they were really surprised of how complex was the 
the food of, of the Mayan inhabitants. They thought that the natives were barbarian. They found the pig and how hard it is to calculate how much time or how long you're, you're gonna have your food in the, in the hole. So I think they were really, really impressed of what they found here in Yucatan. So today what uh, we would like to do is to take us on a journey from pre-Columbian cuisine to modern time uh, Yucatecan. Well, today we're gonna make Yucatecan tamal, which is called sotobichay, which means brazo de reina or queen's arm. We use the lard that comes out of chicharra. Chicharra is like a pork confit, so this is what gives the flavor of the tamales in Yucatan. And the only real way is to actually mix it with hand. This is actually one of the first dishes that was culturally mixed. I think that Yucatan is one of, of those places where you can see the actual bonding or the actual melting of the Hispanic and Mexican culture. We have really strong pre-Hispanic flavors that are added up to food or meats that came from Spain. We have strong flavors and spicy flavors. We have seasoned flavors that have like this push that invites you to continue eating it. Do you have a lot of influences in here from many other cultures, so why don't use or a knowledge that other culture. It's about questioning yourself. It's about questioning what you're doing, the why you do it, why you do it. And this is the only way to, to move on and to improve yourself. So this is a taloc or iwana that we're gonna try today, which will be made in Recado Rojo. What we need to do is get rid of the head first. We're just gonna remove the skin as if it was a vest. All the meat is in the legs, and part of the tail, which is the, the edible part. Here in Yucatan, in all the little towns and villages, you can find houses that have the signs that they sell some specific food or some specific dish. I think it's what makes the Mexican culture so, so family-like, because you have all the home-cooked dishes. And here in Mexico, we have the tendency to look out for that home cooked scent. We like to feel at home. So when you're on a road trip and you're missing home, you just wanna eat something that reminds you. Normally, the comida que hacemos pues es a veces de la milpa igual. Esta es mi casa, mi casa, la de mis padres, yo vivo con ellos. Y pues el relleno negro pues es lo que se va a comer ahorita. Antes, ocho días de que se haga el relleno, se este, quema el chile para que se pueda este, lavar y quitarle el humo que este, lleva al quemarlo. Se quema y luego se, hay que lavarlo este, diario. Después, un día antes de que se prepare, pues se este, muele el chile con todo lo que lleva, que es este, ajo, pimienta grande, clavo, orégano, este canela y cebolla. Entonces se le muele todo completo y sale la pasta para, para preparar el relleno negro. Hoy tenemos el pavo, ¿no? Sí, es de pavo. Pues normal porque pues aquí es lo acostumbrado, entonces uno cuando va creciendo pues ve todo cómo se hace y pues uno aprende. Cenamos tortillas igual. Eso es todos los días. It's incredible. Each family has their own recipe the way that each family carry their own secrets that's so much related and rooted to the land. Last time it was more on the road, it was the hunger of finding something. And now it's been more reflective. We didn't move around so much. What I uh, felt it was very important that we start to bring the conversation to a different level and try really to focus on specific issues. A guy like Jorge, the way that he approaches work, I think is sensational. I'm a sculptor, artista plástico. I like to make art objects that actually extend what I'm interested in. The culinary conditions that are existing now, are beginning to form, are really interesting because the kind of play involved in them is very similar to the kind of play that you have in art to some degree. Culinary culture is aspiring to the aesthetic. And what I mean by the aesthetic is the problem of how something feels as you consume it. You put it in your mouth, it happens. One of the theories people love chocolate so much is it's one of the few things you eat that actually melts at exactly your body temperature. Food 
kind of lives and dies by those kinds of operations, and those things are involuntary. You know, we're, artworks are not involuntary. <laughs> they're, they're, they're telling you something, and they're showing you something at the same time. I think that you have to get a distillation of all these different practices and try to condense And I see, really, the chef, it could be the perfect uh, trade uh, to experiment on this, to create a new breed of people, in a sense. You know, we lost that uh, hunger for discovery, for, uh, for challenging ourselves, for questioning ourselves. It's been an intense week of discovering you know, new flavors. Each one of us is going to make a dish. It's like a celebration of the experience, a celebration of what we learn. My dish is called Biodiverse. And basically it's a combination of the great variety of beans that are found in this area. So it's a, just roasted off the crab and lobster shells with some onions, some garlic, some tomato, and then reducing it down for a nice sauce. For the seafood chicharron. It's actually the sound ballast of the fish, which we take out and we dehydrate and then we just fry it off. Do you want to try some? We are inspired by something, we're inspired by nature, we're inspired by all sorts of things. And, and we're just you know, interpreting ourselves, our, our own reality, and, and you have medium to do that. And food is it's, it's an important medium. I am known as a vegetarian chef. What I try to do is take all the techniques that they use and apply it to vegetables. We have the red ricotta. So I'm making also like a green tomatillo potato salsa. Instead of cooking it with meat, we're cooking it with the eggs and vegetables. So it's the same thing. The taste is still delicious. You don't necessarily have to have the meat with it. But there was a lot of meat. There was a lot of pork. <laughs> I've got three different ways of pork. This is the longanisa sausage. We went to the smokehouse and I've taken the skin off it. And I'm just going to do it on a fried uh, sweet potato. Um, I think that if you bound people together and you put them through uh, hardship and travel and discovery, something happens. Just get to lay the land and get a feel for the, the culture and from everything to planting on the milpa to uh, being here tonight. It's uh, kind, of, kind of already come full circle. It's been a beautiful experience. So. A lot of fun. And quite warm. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So tonight is the Cookie Raw evening. It's an event that's been running for the last seven years. Every year we discover different regions around the world. This year we happen to be here in Yucatan. Now, 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 more food. I strongly believe that this is needed and that's why I'm doing it. Because I want to understand what the fuck am I here? So why can I eat better? Why can I understand better the way that we can be much more in symphony and harmony to, to, to nature and, uh, and more respectful also for, also for each other. And uh, I use food as a way of doing that.